Okay, guys. Okay, guys, short on time, so I'm not re-recording that, even though I completely fucked up there. But, uh... Right in chapter 34, the shrimp harvester. <clears throat> the sky was dark blue, and the mud bore a pond during a fro powdering of frost when Matt pulled himself from the ground. He crouched to protect what little warmth his body produced. A wind ruffled the little pools of water that dotted the desert. The east was a blaze of pink and yellow. Matt had never been so cold in his life. His teeth chattered, his body felt like one giant goose bump. In the growing light, he saw that his clothes had been torn in a dozen places during his journey through the pit. His arms and legs were covered with, sc with scratches. He hadn't noticed the injury during the desperate fight to survive, but now he heard all over. Chacho, he called on the Sea of Bones, trying, turning gray in the pre-dawn light. Chacho! Matt's voice was carried off by the breeze. I'm outside. I'm safe. You can be too. Just come toward my voice. No answer. You'll go down a little, but after a while, you'll come to the edge of the pit. I can help you then, called Matt. No answer. Matt paced back and forth along the edge of the basin. He had a fair idea where Chacho was, but he couldn't see him. There's water out here from the storm. I can get it to you, but you can come to it. I can't get it to you, but you can come to it. It'll make you feel a lot better. Please, Chacho, don't give up. But the boy made no reply. Matt found a rain fill hollow in a rock and drank until his head stabbed with pain. The water was freezingly cold. He went back to the edge of the basin, calling, begging, even insulting Chacho to get a response. There was nothing. As the sun came over the rim of the desert, the light flooded the little hillocks and bushes around, and Matt curled up in the shelter of a rock and cried. He couldn't think of a thing to do. Chacho was out there, but he couldn't find him. Even if he did find him, Matt couldn't go to him, and there weren't any plants in the desert that would make a decent rope. Matt wept until he was exhausted, which didn't let take long because he was tired already. The sunlight brought a slight warmth to the air, although the wind whipped it away from the minute Matt stood up. What could he do? Where could he go? He couldn't stay here until Jorge came back to check up on things, but he couldn't leave Chacho behind either. He limped back to the basin and sat on the edge. He talked and talked, sometimes ex exhorting Chacho to come toward his voice, sometimes only rambling on about his childhood. He talked about El Patron and the fantastic birthday parties. He talked about Marie and Furball. He talked until his throat was raw, but it didn't. But he didn't stop because he felt this was his only hope he could throw Chacho. If Chacho could hear him, he wouldn't feel completely alone and might try and stay alive. The sun rose high enough to shine into the pit. <clears throat> Matt saw, not far down, a patch of brown. It was the uniform all the boys wear in the factory. I can see you, Chacho told Matt. You aren't far from the edge. You can make it if you try. In the distance, he heard a clanking, mechanical noise. It wasn't Jorge's cart, but perhaps the keeper had borrowed something sturdier. Matt shaded his eyes. He wanted to hide, but he saw with dismay he'd left muddy footprints all over the ground. He couldn't possibly wipe them out before someone arrived. He waited hopelessly for the keeper to find him, but instead, to his amaz amazement, he saw Tonton's shrimp harvester shuddering and groaning over the desert. Fidelidio sat up on the hood. As soon as he saw Matt, he, star he jumped off and started running. The shrimp harvester. J <clears throat> Matt jumped. As soon as he saw Matt, he jumped off and started running. Matt, Matt, shrieked the little boy. Where you, you got out? Where's Chacho? He flung himself at Matt and almost knocked him over. I'm so happy you're alive. I was so worried. Matt held on to him, to keep from dancing over the edge of the basin. The shrimp harvester jerked to a stop. I, uh, I thought you might need help, said Tom Tom. Matt began to laugh, only it wasn't a laugh, more like hysteria. Need help? He wheezed out. I guess you could say that. I did say it, said Tom Tom, looking puzzled. Matt began to shiver. His laughter turned into stormy weeping. Don't do that, wailed Fidelidio. It's Chacho, sobbed Matt. He's in the bones. He won't talk. I think he's dead. Where? said Tom Tom. Matt pointed out the brown uniform, where all, all the while while clutching Fidelidio's arm. He was terrified the little boy would fall into the pit. Tom Tom positioned the harvester at the edge. He reached into the bones with the mechanical arm he used to dig shrimp tanks into his collecting bin. At the end was a large claw. 
Slowly, methodically, Tauntaun cleared away the top layer until he could see Chacho's face. The boy's eyes were closed. Tauntaun moved away more bones until Chacho's chest appeared. The cloth was torn and the uniform was streaked with blood, but he was breathing. It'd work better if I could, uh, help, said Tauntaun. He maneuvered the machine as delicately as a surgeon performing an operation. Could I climb out on the arm and then tie a rope to him? Matt had stopped crying, but he couldn't seem to stop shivering. <laughs> grunted Tauntaun. You'd be, uh, as much help as a drunk buzzard trying to, uh, carry off a dead cow. He continued working so slowly and carefully that Matt wanted to scream, yet it made sense. Any wrong move could send the bones slithering back down to cover Chacho. Finally, Tauntaun closed the jaws of the shrimp harvester around Chacho's body. The jaws were strong enough to crush rock, but Tauntaun lifted the boy as gently as, gently as if he were an egg. He backed up the machine. The arm swung around until it cleared the basin and de deposited Chacho on the ground. Tauntaun pulled the arm up and over the top of the shrimp harvester, folding it into the storage position. Careful in everything, he wasn't about to leave this job half done. Matt knelt by Chacho and felt his pulse. It was slow but strong. Fidelidio patted his face. Why won't you wake up? He is, uh, in shock, said Tauntaun alone alighting from the machine. I've seen it before. People can only take so much fear, and they go into a kind of, a uh, sleep. Hold him up. I've got fluids, and I've got to get fluids into him. Matt propped Chacho up while Tauntaun dribbled red liquid from a plastic bottle into the boy's mouth. It's strawberry soda, explained Tauntaun. The keepers drink it all the time. It's got electrolytes in it. Good for dehydration. Matt was surprised by Tauntaun's medical knowledge, but of course he stored away everything he heard. Luna at the infirmary must have talked about dehydration. Chacho coughed, licked, to, licked his lips, and swallowed. His eyes flew open. He grabbed the bottle and began gulping it for all it was worth. Slow down, said Tom Tom, retching the bottle away. If you drink too fast, you'll, uh, puke. More, 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 croaked Chacho, but Tom Tom forced him to take sips. Chacho said some bad words, but the older boy shrugged them off. He continued to dole out the strawberry soda until he was satisfied Chacho had had enough. He unpacked another bottle and gave it to Matt. Heaven can't possibly be better than this, thought Matt, swirling the sweet, cool liquid around his mouth. The taste of strawberry soda had been right up there with El Patron's Moro crabs flown in from Yucatan. We'd better get going, said Tom Tom, firing up the shrimp harvester. Matt's euphoria came down with a thump. Go back? Jorge wants to kill us. I heard him say so. Keep your hair on, said Tauntaun. We're going to San Luis to find my abuelita. It was my idea, said Philadidio. It was my idea, Tauntaun said firmly. Matt held his hand over Philadidio's mouth to shut him up. It didn't matter who thought of it as long as Tauntaun didn't get sidetracked. I don't know how far I can walk, murmured Chacho. He looked dazed. That's why I brought the uh, shrimp harvester, said Tauntaun. You and Matt can ride on the tank. Philadidio can, uh, sit up front with me. That, as far as Tauntaun was concerned, was the end of his discretion. Matt didn't argue. By some slow, careful process, Tauntaun decided to make a break for it, and he wanted to make a break at least five miles an hour. Nothing Matt was going to take talk him out of it. Matt wondered how he hoped to evade the keepers. Matt helped Chacho climb down a metal ladder into the tank. Even with the old water flushed out, it reeked of rotten shrimp. Matt thought he'd throw up, except he didn't have anything to throw up. At least he wouldn't get hungry on the way. Chacho fell asleep on the damp floor, but Matt climbed up the ladder and faced into the breeze. Five miles an hour. Matt saw he'd been wildly optimistic. Philadidio could have skipped faster than the shrimp harvester moved. Tom, Tom had to maneuver around rocks and away from holes. Several times the machine tip threatened to tip over, but it ground on, re ground on relentlessly and rightened itself. They went north around the vast basin of bones, and then west. The soil was littered with boulders, the spaces between with deep sand where the harvester wallowed and complained before struggling on. Finally, they arrived at the fence, and Tauntaun halted. Everyone out, he announced. He had to help Matt pull Chacho from the tank. Chacho is too weak to stand. With Fidelidio dancing attendance, they carried him to a soft patch of sand. Stay here, Tauntaun told Fidelidio. I mean it. If I, uh, catch you near the harvester, I'll, uh, beat the stuffing out of you. 
He wouldn't really, whispered Fidelidio as the older voice strode away. What about the keepers, Matt said. Isn't he afraid they'll catch us? Not a chance. Fidelidio wiggled with excitement. They're locked up in their compound. The doors and windows are covered with bags of salt. Mountains and mountains of salt. All the boys helped. Did the, didn't the keepers try to stop them? They were asleep, Fidelidio said. Tonton said they, would wake up, they wouldn't wake up no matter how much noise we made. Matt had a bad feeling about this, but he was too startled by what Tonton was doing to ask more questions. The boy had clamped the jaws of the shrimp harvester on a single wire of the fence. He backed up slowly, pulling the wire with a horrible grinding, screeching noise until snap, the wire parted. Tonton attacked another wire, and another. The more he broke, the easier it was to unthread the rest of the fence, and he'd created a hole big enough to drive through. Matt watched the top of the fence anxiously. The one wire they had to worry about was still up there, snapping and humming in the breeze. As long as Tonton didn't disturb the insulation, they would be fine. How do you feel? Matt asked Chacho. I don't know, said the boy in a faint voice. I'm not sure what's wrong. I tried to reach you last night, but the bones came down so hard I could barely, hardly breathe. It was like being squeezed under a rock. He paused, seeming too weak to go on. Does your chest hurt? asked Matt. Now he understood why Chacho had never answered him. A bit, but I don't think I broke anything. It's just, I can't seem to get enough air. Don't talk, Matt said. We'll take you to a doctor as soon as we get to St. Louis. He was deeply worried, but he didn't understand what was wrong either. <clears throat> Sorry about that, got a text. Uh. Tonton drove through the opening he'd created and helped Matt carry Chacho to the tank. The next part of the trip was much better. A road paralleled the fence, and the shrimp harvester was able to move much faster. Now and then, Tonton stopped to stretch his legs and let Philodidio run off some of his energy. If you, uh, jump up and down on my seat one more time, I'm going to, uh, beat the stuffing out of you, he growled. The little boy quieted down for a minute or two. All of them drank strawberry sodas. Tonton had a crate of them in the cab. He took a break for lunch, producing wonderful food in which Chacho and Philodidio had never seen. They ate pepperoni sausages and cheese, bottled olives and cream crackers. And all of the food made them thirsty, it didn't matter because they had more strawberry soda than they could drink. They finished with chocolates wrapped in gold paper. I'm so happy I could fly, Philodidio said with a contented sigh. Matt worried about the slow, leisurely trip they were taking. Aren't you afraid the capers will dig their way out? He asked Tonton. I told him about the salt bag, said Philodidio. They, uh, they're asleep, said the older boy. Not after all this time, Matt said. Unless... Oh, Tonton, you didn't give them a lot of them. They earned it, he said in the same dogged way he had defended them in the infirmary. How much? Enough, said Tonton. Matt could see he wasn't going to supply any more information. It was wonderful, Fidelidio piped up. Tom t Tonton told us we were going to rescue you, and we only had to wait for sunrise. The harvester works on a... The harvester works on a solar energy, said Tonton. So Flacco checked to make sure the keepers were really asleep. And the others carried off their food, and they piled as many bags of salt around the building as they could find. Flacco said he'd wait for the supply hovercraft to fly him to the keepers' head... Head headquarters, said Tonton. Yes, and tell them what Jorge did. Flacco trusts headquarters. I don't, said Tonton. Me neither, murmured Chacho. He was propped up against the side of the harvester with a bottle of soda. He seemed barely awake. Maybe we should hurry, Matt said, looking at Chacho. Yes, Tonton agreed. And so the shrimp harvester gra so the shrimp harvester ground on until it reached the corner where the fence had turned right. The road continued north toward a low range of hills. To the left lay remnants of the Gulf of California, but presently it vanished and was replaced with drifting sand. Whiffs of foul-smelling air drifted over the harvester. It was the same smell Matt had met in the wastelands near the Egypt pens, where it was only sharper and more alarming. The sun was low in the west. Shadows began to lengthen across the desert. 
The shrimp harvester slowly climbed to the road through the hills, but when it came to a pass where the road was entirely in shadow, it stopped. That's it, said Tauntaun, jumping from the cab. That's as far as it'll go until dawn. Matt helped him lift Chacho from the tank. They laid him next to the road, wrapped in blankets Tauntaun had brought. He and Matt walked to the end of the pass and hunkered down, watching the sun slide into a violet haze. How much farther is San Luis? asked Matt. Three miles, maybe four, said Tauntaun. We have to cross the Colorado River. I don't think Chacho can wait until morning. Chachan could... Tauntaun continued to gaze at the disappearing sun. It was hard to tell what was going through his mind. I, uh, followed my parents into dreamland over for there. He pointed at the haze. Jorge saved me from the dogs. I thought he was... he was wonderful, but he only thought I was stupid. Tauntaun put his head down. Matt guessed he was crying, but he didn't want to embarrass him by noticing. Something like that happened to me, Matt said at last. It did, said Tauntaun. Someone I cared about more than anything in the world tried to kill me. Wow, said Tauntaun, that's really bad. They said nothing for a while. Matt could hear Philodidio telling Chacho how much fun it was to camp out under the stars. Now he used to do it with his abuelita after the hurricane blew away their house. I guess you and, uh, Fidelidio had better walk to San Luis, said Tauntaun. If you can find a doctor, bring him here. If you haven't, uh, returned by dawn, I'll go on. Tauntaun gave, uh, Tauntaun gave Matt and Philodidio flashlights. He supplied them with blankets to ward off cold, ward off cold and lemons to survive the smell. The Colorado River's b bad, he said. It goes into a pipe before it gets to the road, but it's still dangerous. Stay away from it, Philodidio, he warned. Pay attention, or I'll, uh, beat the stuffing out of me, the little boy said cheerfully. I mean it this time, said Tauntaun. End of chapter 34